Now, let's invite our next three panellists up onto the stage, please. Doug Liddell, who is Head of Space um, at Surrey Satellites. Um, a wonderful title, Head of Space. I do envy you. Um, Steve Hobbs, who's Director of the Cranfield Space Research Centre at Cranfield University. And Ian Gray, who's Chief Executive of the Technology Strategy Board. Now, are you going to give a presentation from here? Right, in that case, I will go and sit over there, taking my water glass with me. And um, uh, the field, the, the, the podium, sir, is yours. Thank you very much. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm afraid I do have to correct you. I'm not the head of space, that would be a fantastic title. I'm the head of science, so a typo is crept in somewhere. Um, I'll accept the title though, if, just for today. <laughs> okay, so you've seen this picture before in Martin's presentation. This is Tech Demo Sat 1, and it's going to be the main thrust about which I'm going to talk about now. Um, of course, we have another about 10 missions going through design and manufacture at the moment inside Surrey satellites. So this is just one, but I think this, this, this makes a lot of the key points I want to talk about today. Um, and the point is, how do you get advanced technology into space? Now in the past, as Martin said, uh, Surrey's missions were of a far more experimental nature, uh, and that allowed for very risky new technologies to be flown. Currently, um, a lot of our missions are very commercially driven, and this, this drives conservatism in the kind of technology you can fly. Uh, as an example, the onboard computer, the processor that we use in many of our satellites, is actually based around the old 386 chip that some of you will remember in your uh, PCs from the early 90s. As I say, we still use this. It's getting harder and harder to source, as you can imagine. And when we do come to want to fly new technology, um, you can either try and uh, demonstrate and qualify it on the ground, which can be a very lengthy and a very unrepresentative process, or you can try and put it into space. Now, Tech Demosat was conceived as a testbed to meet this uh, identified need within Surrey to demonstrate our new technology in orbit. Uh, it also allows us to look at demonstrating new services and, uh, and the exploitation of novel data from new sensors. Uh, this is very much in line with the aspirations of uh, the new technology strategy boards, satellite applications, catapult as well. But as an example of the kind of data you could be uh, uh, generating in space and then starting to work on the applications on the ground. From space you can look at Earth from outside the visible range of frequencies and that would allow things like farmers to work out where best to deploy fertilizer um, and how much to deploy or by fusing different information from space from radar instruments and from ship identification systems you can detect piracy or unauthorized shipping activities. So how to make this a reality? Well, if you, if you look at this next slide, um, I actually find this rather beautiful. To many people, it's incredibly ugly. Uh, <laughs> but this is the insides of our satellite. It doesn't look like this at the moment as we're going through test. Um, it looks much more like the thing you saw on the first page. Um, but to, in order to get to this point, we, we engage with other UK industry and academia because um, it was recognised that this in-orbit testbed wasn't just something that, uh, that Surrey needed. So we put an open call out, uh, we went to UK industry and academia, and we asked them to put proposals in. As it turned out, the, the response we got, we could have filled this satellite three times over. Uh, public money was then provided by Technology Strategy Board, and also by CEDA, a, a regional development agency, to fund all the testbed elements of the mission. This isn't a handout, this is a leg up. Uh, industry and academia um, engaged by uh, funding the technology developments and funding the work to develop those themselves and to putting the, together the flight models that would go onto the mission. We, we didn't ask for public money to do that. So who are the partners? Well, Tech Demo SAP program initiated by Surrey and government has stimulated a wave of collaboration between academia and industry. We have a very broad collaboration. Uh, we've been engaging with regional and national government, uh, industry and academia, both large companies and SMEs, um, and also universities, and was mentioned schools as well. So you can see with the commercial payloads, we've got Tech Demosat providing this springboard for exploiting through demonstrating in orbit um, a generation of novel and, and the generation of novel data and new uh, payload technologies. With the academic payloads, Tech Demosat provides the in orbit testbed to prove new concepts and experiments with new technologies and do this in space as opposed to on a lab bench or simulated on a computer. And also there's schools outreach. 
uh, as an example, we've got a suite of uh, radiation monitors uh, provided independently by school, university and industry participants. Um, they are now stimulating collaborative scientific endeavour, which is being supported by the European Space Agency. And the schools element of that is actually engaging with 200 schools in the southeast. So we would like to see uh, Tech Demos as uh, our, our way of working together with UK PLC to put together a, a system that allows us to really get to the forefront and, uh, and demonstrate what the UK can do in space. Thank you very much.